Hello, beautiful. Thank you so much for tuning in with me here live on Instagram. I'm Jess, your self-care keto coach, and it has been a little while since I have done an Instagram live or uh, what will later be broadcasted as a solo podcast episode. But today I'm really excited to talk about something that I think will be a really powerful and really healing perspective shift for you. And it is about the good of being overweight. And you might be thinking, what could be so good about being overweight? There is no good about being overweight. I'm overweight. There's nothing good about it. But hang in tight because I want to explore this a little bit more. That um, Shakespeare said, there is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. So there can be good from being overweight if we are willing to explore some of those thoughts. And I'd love to share with you all how I've arrived at how being overweight was actually a huge source of good in my life. So this is something that I have actually been mulling over for a while, and it has um, recently been punctuated by some really interesting and powerful conversations that I've had with a few clients that I'd love to share with you guys. But before we dig into that, if you could oblige me for just a second, I have a couple of housekeeping items and announcements that I'd love to share with you all. And the first thing is, if you have not heard so far, I am doing something new recently, and that is that I've created a new way to work with me that is a little bit more accessible and not as much of a commitment as signing up for like a coaching program or anything. I'm doing once a month um, one-off mindset classes. So you can sign up that month. um, If if it's something that you're interested in, we're going to be doing a different topic each month. And the theme for the month of February is called Align Your Motivation. And so this class is actually going to be offered live tomorrow on Thursday, February 24th. And um, if you cannot make it live, there's also the option to sign up for instant access to a recorded version of the class. So I want to make it available to everybody. But what we're going to be focusing on is aligning with your natural motivation, your natural personality type, celebrating your strengths and your gifts and um, how you are uniquely wired instead of trying to think that there's something wrong with you and changing yourself and fighting yourself. It is possible to fully embrace how you are already naturally wired. I promise you are a motivated person. You know, whatever it is that you're telling yourself, you are motivated. We just have to understand what it is that uniquely motivates us and then design our environment to line up with that natural motivation that we already have. So we are going to be talking about this from a weight loss perspective, specifically giving examples with keto and how we can approach different strategies that are going to align with your motivation and your personality type. But so much more expansively than that, this is really about self-discovery and getting to know who you are and celebrating who you are. And once you learn this about your motivation and your personality, this is something that will transform your entire life because you will approach every single goal differently for the rest of your life with this information. So the way that you can sign up for that is to go to bit.ly slash self-care keto class. And the link for that is going to be in the show notes of the podcast episode. It's also here in the caption of the Instagram live. So make sure that you sign up for that. Again, it's um, Thursday, February 24th, which is tomorrow, live at 1 p.m. Eastern. And again, if you can't make it live, you can sign up to get the recorded version. You'll have it forever. You can watch it whenever's good for you, rewatch it whenever's good for you, but don't miss out on getting access to that. So let's dig in to the good of being overweight. I promise. It's going to be worth it. Buckle up. Okay. So I've been thinking about this for a while. And that is that if I had never been overweight, I would not be living the life that I am living today. And I would not be the healed, healing, healer person that I am today. So, so much of me internally has healed as a result of being overweight, losing weight, all of the junk that I've had to work through in in that journey, so much of me has healed as a result of that. I'm still healing. I'm still working through a lot of the, the messages and as they come up and I've made a ton of progress, but we're all still healing even as much as we have been healed. And also I consider myself a healer. I, I'm, I'm bringing healing to other people 
through this, through, through being a coach, through being a weight loss coach, through being a life coach, I would have never, I don't think I would be doing any of this if not for having been overweight and struggling with weight for most of my life. And so that immediately comes to mind as just a huge supreme resource of good in my life. But I had to think about it differently in order to arrive at that. And I was having a conversation with one of my clients a couple of weeks ago. And she was sharing with me, she's losing weight, by the way. She, she's on the journey. She's already lost like almost 20 pounds. And, you know, she's, she's doing it and she's doing the, the internal work. But she went through about like a week where she was just feeling really low, really sad, having this thought circulate in her brain of, okay, yeah, like I'm glad that I'm finally doing this, but why did it have to take so long? Why did I have to go through all of the pain that I went through up until this point? Why couldn't I have done this earlier? Why, 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 why? It's, it's not fair. And, you know, I, I was engaging with her on this topic and we kind of got to this belief, this limiting belief that she holds, which is that if she could have only done this sooner, then right now she would be so much happier and so much more successful, not just in her relationship with her body, but in really all of her life as she saw it. She thought she would be more successful in her career by now. She thought she would be more successful in her love life by now. Like it basically expanded to everything. And so she was angry and she was directing that anger at herself. Like she, she literally said like, I hate myself for this. And, you know, we kind of just explored that like, okay, what if that weren't true? that you would be more successful than where you are right now? What if you are actually as successful as you are right now because of being overweight? What if you will be massively more successful than you ever could have been because you were overweight and because you lost this weight? And I shared with her my story. Like I I would not be doing what I'm doing right now. I would not be a coach. I would not be an entrepreneur. I would not be um, more successful working for myself than I was working for, you know, another employer, like it's, it's unbelievable how much more successful and happier I am because of the way that I've thought about all of the good that has come out of this journey for me. So I thought I would do an episode about this and share with you guys how I've been able to find the good in being overweight. And, you know, on the surface, maybe you're listening to this and wondering, is this about like, um, you know, health at every size or about body positivity. No, that, that's not what this is about. I'm not against those things, but that's not what actually this is about right now. There's a lot of information about that online if you want to go for that or whatever. And, you know, that's, that's awesome. So, but that's not what this is about. This is about transforming your pain into purpose, transforming what maybe was intended to harm or what has harmed and turning that, flipping it on its head and turning that into good, that you can transform that energy because of how you think about it and the choices that you make going forward. So I made out a list of ways that I have seen being overweight to have been so good for me in my life and my my weight loss journey to be so good for me in my life. I'm going to share some of those with you guys today. So, um, In my childhood, I really struggled with my weight. If you want to see some photos of me when I was a little girl, you can head on over to my um, Instagram profile at the Keto Fit and click in my highlights. It says my story. And I've got some pictures up there from when I was a little kid that struggled with weight and um, body image and all of that. So yeah, I struggled with my weight as a child. And even though I reached a healthy weight by, you know, the age of puberty, um, I didn't do it in healthy ways. And I never saw myself as healthy. I I continued, even though I was at a quote unquote healthy BMI or healthy weight, I always saw myself as overweight for the rest of my life. It felt like a thorn in the flesh, like in more than actually um, the pain of being like whatever size that I was. Like it wasn't, it wasn't my body that was causing the pain. It was my thoughts that was that was causing the pain. It was the constant comparison to other people. It was the constant criticism of myself. It was the constant calculating of calories every single day of my life behind the scenes and the anxiety that came along with that and the not being present with the people that I loved or for the experiences that I was getting to have in my life. I was not present to any of it. I was completely um, just so hyper-focused on obsessing with, with food 
And that's so sad to me now. And there's a place for that sadness. There's a place for that grief. Hey, Marty, thanks for, thanks for saying that. Thanks for thanking me for all that I do. Thank you too. Um, yeah. And there's the heaviness that comes along with that of actually grieving the things that you lost in your life as a result of not just the weight, but the thoughts about your weight. So, but what came out of the the good of being a, a child that struggled with my weight and even being criticized for all of that was that it actually made me a very, very driven person. It made me a very hard worker. Um, it made me really lean into my brain um, and academics and all of that. And, you know, it created that strength in me of, of leaning into where I felt comfortable or felt like I could shine, which was in my intellect and in academics and all of that. And so I'm grateful for that. You know, like I, I have a master's degree now in life coaching because of, you know, the foundation of becoming really passionate about going to school and, and um, pouring my whole self into my academic achievements when I was a kid. Hey, Jen, thanks for joining. Um, so that was something good that came out of it. And yes, it has a shadow side, right? We all, all of our strengths have a shadow side. So yes, I became perfectionistic. I became, you know, hyper-focused on achievement and defining my self-worth by ac- academics and intellect at times. Absolutely. But also there, the good side of that is that it really equipped me to become a subject matter expert in my career later in life. And now, you know, I'm a subject matter expert with keto and health and nutrition and all of those things. So I wouldn't probably be where I am today if not for um, having that experience in childhood of feeling like, well, my body's not good enough. So let me lean into where I feel like I really can shine. So that's something that is good for me that came out of that because I choose to recognize the good in that. Another thing for me is experiencing my health and experiencing actually loving my body at this point in my life. I I would not be here had I not been overweight. Now, I grew up hating my body, even though at a certain point in my life, I was the same size that I am right now, but I hated myself at this size. When I was in high school, I probably weighed the same thing that I weigh right now, but I absolutely hated myself. And I went through a lot of my adult life and up until my mid twenties, I went through a pretty traumatic experience and I actually packed on about 40 pounds in the course of a year. So at that point I truly was overweight um, for the first time in a really long time. I was overweight as a kid. My weight leveled out with puberty. I was at a quote unquote healthy weight, but always saw myself as overweight. But then here I am in my, my mid to late twenties and I am truly overweight. And that was so painful for me. I, I remember hiding out from my life. I remember crying every day when it was time to get dressed, like changing outfits, like six or seven times. If you're watching this right now, give me a heart. If that's you. Um, I remember turning down plans to hang out with people. I remember like walking by a mirror and feeling like, that's not me. Like, who is that? Like, didn't even like recognize myself. I felt like an alien stuck in my own body. And I remember thinking to myself, if I could just get back to the weight where I was, oh gosh, I can't even tell you how many clients have told me this. Like, I wish that I had realized how beautiful and cute and adorable I was at that weight where I thought that I was fat for the first time, you know? And I, I, I promised myself, um, when I would get back to that weight that I would celebrate that I would love myself so hard. And you guys like, and I did, you know, like I, I truly do love my body now for the, for the size that I am. And I I think I'm I'm beautiful. I'm, I'm celebratory of my body and all that it's taken me through. But again, years ago, before I had gained all that weight and then re-lost it, I was the same size and absolutely hated myself. When you, it's like you, you, in order to fully experience something, you have to understand what it's like not to have it. We take our health for granted. We take whatever um, size or beauty or whatever, we, we take it for granted because we don't have anything to actually compare it to. Like the good in life is good because we have the experience of the pain. You know, the joy, you can experience joy because you've experienced grief. So it's like when you get, when you get sick or when you have um, 
pain in your body for the first time. I never had um, chronic pain in my life until a couple of years ago and I started struggling with chronic back pain literally out of nowhere. And you know, you don't realize how good you felt when you had your health until you no longer have it. And then when I got out of pain, uh, through going to a chiropractor and you know working on some trauma and trauma therapy things like that like i'm 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 pain free for the most part now but i appreciate what that feels like now because i knew what i now know what it was like to be in that pain most people go through their whole lives and they don't um really appreciate being pain free because they've never been in chronic pain the people who have never been overweight in their life they go through their whole life not really appreciating having a healthy body size and healthy, um, you know, metabolic state and all the things that we're striving for right now, they don't appreciate it. They don't even think about it because they've never had the absence of it. And so I have such a joyful experience with my body and with my health as a result of at one point in my life, having not had it and having experienced that pain. I celebrate my body every single day now because I remember what my body felt like and looked like to have an extra 50 pounds on it compared to where I am today. And that is so good. Like that gives me goodness in my life every single day because of what I went through. So another thing is finding what would make me feel truly good in terms of what I eat instead of just what what would make me feel skinny. So most of my life, I was only ever focused on being skinny. Like it was not about health or, or feeling good. Um, it was always just about what would make me lose weight or what what would I avoid to not gain weight. And that's all food was to me, was just calories in, calories out. Food was, um, it, it was a source of pleasure, but it was also a huge source of fear. Um, so whenever you'd be, whenever I would be enjoying something, it was always like, fear was always there at the same time with it. It was never just pure pleasure. It was like guilty pleasure, just always. I never had pure pleasure with food. Um, food was scary. Food was the enemy. Food would make me fat food. Um, yeah, I just, it, it was not, um, really ever true, pure pleasure in food like I have now. So lost my train of thought, going back to my notes, what would make me feel good instead of what would make me feel skinny? Um, I would still be in the same place that I am today. Had I not gone through my journey with losing weight on keto specifically. I, I, I firmly believe that I would still be approaching food in terms of losing weight or maintaining my weight instead of eating foods that actually make me feel good. This was, um, this was serendipity. Like this was not something that I sought out. Like I look at this as totally like a gift from God, like bonus more than I ever hoped or imagined. Like I just wanted to lose weight, you guys. And instead, um, through, you know, just happenstance finding, like, I'm just going to try Atkins for two weeks back in 2013. Um, and then it turned into never going back because I was so amazed at the difference in what I felt like, um, once I was no longer riding the blood sugar roller coaster. And once my body switched over from primarily burning sugar for fuel to fat for fuel, like what that shifted inside of me, I had no idea that that was coming. I was just trying to lose 10 pounds as quickly as possible. So I got more than ever I, I asked or, or hoped for out of that. That is so good. Like, and throughout that journey, something started to shift in me. It was no longer just about being skinny. I wasn't doing it just to lose weight anymore. I was doing it because I felt better than I had ever felt in my life. And I thought to myself, why the heck would I go back from something like that? And I'm so grateful now that for the past over eight years, I've been feeling good in my body and feeling good in my relationship with food for the first time in my entire life. I would have never found that had I not been so desperate to lose 10 pounds that I tried out Atkins. I I didn't know what was going to happen. I look at that as truly like, like a gift from God. Like that's so good. I would not, I would not be where I am today. Had I, had I not gone through the pain of being overweight that pushed me into trying something new. And it turned out to be one of the best things I've ever done in my entire life. Um, the confidence that I've gained as a result of realizing, um, that I truly had the ability to change my life, losing weight. When you see that number on the scale go down, it's like proof that you have influence over your life. I changed my behavior and I got a different result. Like I know this sounds so simple, 
but it really does build confidence because you feel so stuck. You feel like powerless to, to change your life. And it feels like your life is just happening to you and it feels massively unfair. And yeah, you just feel like, um, kind of a victim in your life. And it's this one small little thing where you can point to and say, I made that happen. I made, because of my choices, I now weigh 10 pounds less. And, you know, so many things that I see with my clients beyond just weight loss, like reversing um, their diabetes or healing their hormones or, you know, just so many non-scale victories. I've, I've seen clients get pregnant, reverse insulin resistance, all these things. Like, and when we can actually see those blood sugar numbers go down or see the number on the scale go down or see the blood work change, whatever, like it is like concrete proof that you can change your life. And that brings a certain level of like hope and confidence. It infuses you with something like, wow, it infuses you with an empowerment that if you can change that, what else could you change? And I've seen this happen in my own life. It gave me so much more confidence in myself and trust in myself. And I started looking around like, yeah, I did just lose 50 pounds. What else can I do if I set my mind to it? Because I did something huge. Like, whether it's five pounds or 50 pounds, like you made that happen. And likewise, the same way that you made that happen, you have the ability to make other things happen in your life. You have so much more agency and power and control in your life than you give yourself credit for. And it's true that there's a lot of things that are outside of our control, but so many things are actually inside of our control. And, um, the biggest thing that we don't give ourselves enough credit for in terms of like what we have control over is our thoughts and not believing every thought that we have. And, you know, that's, that's leads me into my next point about what really changed for me. And the good that came out of having been overweight is, you know, not just again, the confidence and, and the proof that you really can influence your life. You can change your life. Um, but also the skill that I gained in losing weight. And so there's a lot of skill to weight loss. Weight loss is a skill. Um, and it's a, and this is what I tell my clients, like you will gain weight and lose weight for the rest of your life. Truly. Even if it's just like a pound, like the the scale goes up by a pound and then you lose that pound. The scale goes up by three pounds. You lose those three pounds. That's called maintaining your weight and you will do that for the rest of your life. And that's a skill, right? So weight can come off and weight can come back on. You will gain weight. You will lose weight, but what you will never lose is the inner work and the skills that you acquire through learning how to lose weight and learning how to properly take care of your body. So it's all about thought management and it's all about emotional management more so than it is about the strategies that you follow, but it is both, you know? And so it is mindset, um, probably more than anything. You need the right strategies that are actually going to get you to your goal, but you actually you need the right mindset and learning how to manage your emotions instead of numbing out from your emotions, like feeling your feelings instead of, um, numbing them with food. Like these are things like not believing every thought that pops into your head. Like with my, with my client, like, you know, I would be so much more successful by now had I not struggled with this for so long. Okay. Maybe, but maybe not. Like we don't know if that's true or false, but is it helpful or is it harmful? And you can learn to examine your thoughts and not believe every single thought that you have, because if she believed that thought and didn't talk to me about it and didn't reach out, chances are she would probably have completely derailed herself and self-sabotaged because when you believe those limiting thoughts, these are the things that keep you stuck in the same cycles of self-sabotage. And so that's one of the biggest things that I got out. One of the biggest um, sources of good from having been overweight is the journey that I had to go on internally in order to lose that weight. And also the strategies, also the tinkering, like the, the curiosity, the, the not giving up, like when something's not working, okay, we don't just stop and throw our hands up that I would never do that at work. I would never do that anywhere else in my life. Why am I doing that with my weight? Like if I'm working on a project at work and we thought that such and such would work, we don't just say, Oh, well, it didn't work. Like might as well give up. Like, no, it's on the list of goals for the year. It's been assigned to me. Like there's no freaking way I'm going to give up because you know, I would just never do that. Why do we let ourselves off the hook with weight loss? 
No, it's something that you deeply care about and you can tinker with it. And version one, version two, version 2.5, however many versions we need to come out with, we're going to tinker with it and we're going to find different strategies as long as we continue to be curious instead of judgmental. Um, if something's not working, you don't blame yourself. You blame the strategy. Like, And if you um, stuck to your strategies and they didn't work, you can still celebrate yourself that you stuck to your strategies. You were successful because you stuck to your strategies, not because you didn't get the result that you wanted. Again, it's the same thing. Like apply that to any other area of your life. You wouldn't blame yourself. You would just be like, oh, okay, I guess that strategy doesn't work. Maybe we should try a different strategy. Um, but you can still celebrate the fact that you put that on your list of goals for the week. You you stuck to it. You were consistent. And so now we're just going to tweak it a little bit so that we actually do get the result that we were looking for. But we were successful either way because we kept the promise to ourselves. We followed our strategies. We had a good guess. It just didn't, it didn't work out. Um, and so learning to overcome that fear of failure and what that means about yourself, there is no failure. There's only learning. And we're continually tweaking and continually um, changing our minds and it's safe to change your mind at any point in your life. Those are some of the big good lessons that I've learned out of the skill of losing weight. Um, having empathy for others is a huge good that came out of my life. Um, I was always judgmental about people that were overweight growing up my whole life. And the reason why I was judgmental about other people being overweight is because I was overweight when I was a kid and I was heavily criticized by my mom, um, directly and indirectly, you know, like some of us, maybe you've never actually been, um, openly criticized by somebody that you looked up to. Like they would tell you, you need to lose weight, something like that, but they would make comments about other people in front of you. Um, it, it can be very insidious, right? And it's the air that we all breathe. We're all conditioned to be judgmental towards people that are overweight. And, you know, I was, and I, because that was my biggest fear was that I would be overweight. And so almost like, a, yeah, like a total disdain for myself and for anybody that was overweight until I gained those 40 pounds in my mid twenties and I was overweight. And I felt then so much compassion for anybody that was struggling with their weight. It like, when you have walked in somebody else's shoes, it removes the judgment. And then you can finally have empathy for what other people are going through. I didn't have empathy for new moms until I was a new mom. Like seriously, like I remember it's just like, it's so sad, you know, like, but you can't have empathy. You can have sympathy for other people, right? But you, but it's different. You can try, sympathy is like imagining how they must feel, but empathy is feeling it with them. And you can't do that. Like until you've been a mom, you can't have empathy for what that other new mom is going through. But then like when, when you have gone through that, it's like, it's like a, I don't know. It's just like a mom thing. Like you can just look somebody in the eyes and you just know they feel you. Like, it's just like, ugh, you have a soul sister, right? And it's like that as well, I think, with people that have gone on a weight loss journey or who have been overweight. You can have empathy for that person. Um, I didn't have empathy for people that um, like struggled in their mobility until I had a, a leg injury after my daughter was born and I had to walk using a walker, um, you know, then a cane and just then just like parking in the handicap spot. Like here I am this like, you know, I was 31. And, you know, I'm like hobbling around because I had an, a nerve injury in my leg and I had seen people like that were dealing with that, but I just never, again, I felt sympathy, but I never felt empathy. So any of the pain that you've gone through in your life, you now have a superpower of having empathy for other people who are in that same situation. And I would not be able to be the coach that I am today to help women lose weight with a keto diet and a self-care mindset, as I always say, I would not have that empathy had I not gone through what I had gone through. There's a lot of probably well-meaning coaches, um, personal trainers, people like that, doctors, nurses, people out there, nutritionists, dietitians, trying to help people to lose weight. But you guys know the difference between somebody that is just giving you advice and saying like, eat less, move more, or go follow this diet plan, or, you know, just do your reps, no excuses. You know, this type of person who's just like, just follow the plan versus somebody who has truly walked in your shoes and knows what it feels like to have been where you've been and 
to have walked that journey and understands the pain that you're going through and understands how hard it truly is and what it what an inner battle it really is, right? And so again, you just have that resonance with somebody who has walked that along with you. Good morning, Linda. Thanks for being here. And so I really believe that that is one of the best things that ever happened to me was um, having gone through my own pain of being overweight and the journey that has come along with that because it has given me the superpower of having empathy for every single one of the clients that I work with. And empathy, feeling something with somebody and just that that loving presence, um, no judgment, just unconditional love, that is what creates the container for transformation that is so powerful about working with a coach. And I'm so grateful for that. So that's, that's another huge good that has come, um, for me out of being overweight, turning my pain into purpose. That's kind of what I've been talking about since the beginning here is like, yeah, it, it was, it was painful. It was, it was so painful. It was so hard, um, for as long as I can remember, like literally I was like, you know, go look at the pictures of me. I think I must have been five. Like I was five years old. I was in my kindergarten cap and gown. And, you know, I was overweight and, and, and I knew it because my, the people around me told me, you know, like I think about my daughter now and she's five. She doesn't have that, um, awareness of anything about her body because I've never said anything about her. I've never commented to her about her body and like how beautiful because, you don't, um, you know, I think it's like around age nine, like researchers have shown basically like girls around age nine, eight or nine is when that, um, awareness of their own body kind of comes into play prior to that. We're completely free. We're just present in our bodies. Like we don't have judgment about our bodies unless it's been put onto us by somebody else. And for me as a child, it was put onto me by others. Um, I'm sure it wasn't their intent, but the impact was so harmful. Something that, um, you know, changed my brain forever and ever put beliefs into my brain that was operating in my subconscious for years and years and years until I finally had the tools and the resources and the divine timing to be able to move through that. So, but yeah, all of that pain, it's just energy that you can transform that energy into purpose. If you choose, if you allow yourself to see the good that could come out of that and allow yourself to experience the good that can come out of that. So again, nothing is either good or bad, but your thinking makes it. So I want to be really careful with this conversation because there's, you know, danger in having toxic positivity, right? So toxic positivity, I was just talking with a client about this this week because um, we have a tendency to do this in our culture and, you know, even in a lot of our um, spiritual practices, I think we can spread toxic positivity. And what this is, is using positivity to invalidate somebody's pain because of your own discomfort with seeing seeing that person in pain or maybe what that pain triggers inside of you. And toxic positivity sounds like, oh, don't cry. Um, Let's look on the bright side. Let's count our blessings. Um, Remember, have an attitude of gratitude and it could be worse. Other people have it so much worse than you. Things like that, right? And so that is not helpful. That is harmful because what that does is that invalidates the person who is actually in pain and it doesn't take away their pain. All that it does is it lets them know that you're not a safe container for their pain. And so then they'll bury it down and then they've lost someone to share that with. And it just makes it worse. They just keep it to themselves. We do this with each other. We do this with our kids and we do this to ourselves. And so I don't want you to take everything that I've just said and use it as toxic positivity on yourself, like force yourself to find the good in the pain of being overweight. Before you do any of that, you actually really need to grieve. And so remember the story that I was telling you about my, my client who was saying, um, and she was beating herself up there. There was shame in addition to the grief. We don't want the shame. You know, she was saying like, I hate myself for this. Why did this have to take me so long? I would be so much further along in my life by now if I could have just gotten this 
under control sooner, or if I could have just, you know, learned what I learned sooner. And so there's two things going on there. There's shame and then there's grief. And so the shame is never going to help anything. And so I wanted to help her remove that shame. Like you didn't ask for this. Like I, as a kid, didn't ask to be taught what I was taught. Like, no, that's outside of your control. Like we have to view ourselves through the lens of self-compassion when it comes to that, instead of judgment, remove the shame, but allow that guilt to really work through, um, not guilt, um, grief, allow that guilt. I keep saying that, allow that grief, not guilt, grief to really move through you. And grief is allowing yourself to fully validate and experience the pain of what you have lost as a result of having gone through this journey of being overweight. So everything that I've just said about the good that's come from my life of having been overweight, I have already um, processed through the grief that came along with being overweight. What was taken from me as a child was just being in my body and not being ashamed. Like I experienced shame was put on me at such a young age. Shame about my body was put on me at such a young age that I didn't get the, the innocence of childhood that I see my daughter having today. I didn't get that. That, that was, that was taken away from me. I, I lost so much presence to be with the people that I loved because I was taught that I needed to count calories and be obsessed with every item of food that I ate. Otherwise I would be fat. And if you're fat, then you're worthless. Who knows? Like whatever's being implied there is what I believed. And as a result, I was never present. I was never happy. I never let myself be happy with where I was. I never let myself be content. I was always striving and pushing for the next thing and shaming myself and beating myself up. I lost so many beautiful opportunities to be present. I had a client that I was helping her through this grief process and, and she told me I didn't eat cake on my wedding day because all I had that day was black coffee because I, I was just trying to, she already did fit into her dress, right? But she was trying to look as thin as possible in her dress. And, you know, she was so upset, like all these years, like 20 years later that she didn't eat cake on her wedding day, but it's not about the cake. Um, you know, you didn't miss out on the sugar or whatever, like you missed out on the joy and the presence and the intimacy of being with other people and the celebration of the moment because you were obsessed with your own body and measuring your self-worth by that. Like we need to grieve that. We need to grieve what we have lost. We need to validate the pain that we've actually been through and say, you know, it makes sense that you feel the way that you feel right now about wishing that you could have only received this. I wish you could have too. I do wish that. I do wish you could have been spared all of that pain. And it's not fair. And it does suck. And it is so hard. I know you've been through so much pain. Give that to yourself before you try to find any good out of it. Otherwise, it's just going to be toxic positivity. So don't skip over that. And I know that that's hard and that's not glamorous. And you probably do just want to skip over it because feeling your feelings is hard, right? But if you don't actually take the time to do that, that's going to keep popping up for you on your weight loss journey as a self-sabotaging belief. Um, For my client that I was working with her on this, it was um, a fear of missing out. That's a common saboteur for her. And so, and why is there a fear of missing out? Because of everything that she did miss out on, that she never actually allowed herself to grieve, right? And so turning that fear of missing out on its head, I want you to be afraid for the rest of your life of fearing missing out on the things that you missed out on, which is joy, happiness, presence, self-love, self-acceptance, not cake, not sugar. Like you're not afraid of missing out on that for the rest of your life. You're afraid of missing out on all the things that were taken from you as a result of having these screwed up beliefs. Let's lean into that fear of missing out. That part of you that feels like it's trying to self-sabotage, you know, it's actually trying to protect you. We just need to see it for the reality that it really is and wrap our arms around that And that will fuse back into you with integrity instead of feeling like this is like this enemy part of you that's always trying to screw you over. No, that's not what it is. And so that's why it's so important to validate yourself and to grieve that. And then, then and only then, make your own list. What is the good 
that is currently in your life as a result of being overweight? What are you learning as a result of this? What skills are you gaining as a result of this? How are you transforming your pain into purpose as a result of this? How are you allowing yourself to receive the good because of this? And then in the future, can you imagine? I know sometimes we can only see these things in the rear view mirror, but in the future, can you imagine the good that will come of it? How has it actually developed your other gifts because of feeling a limitation in your body? What gifts have you developed as a result? Even though they do, I'm sure they have their shadow side when you feel like you're using it to earn love or acceptance or approval or whatever. But at the same time, they are real strengths that you've developed and you can use them towards this goal and any other goal. Um, How are you transforming your pain into purpose? How might this make you more successful? How, How might this have changed you for the better? What skills? are you learning as a result that you're now, you're going to be able to apply that to anything else. So again, I just want to first, you know, first do the hard stuff, the grieving, but then start to explore this beauty and this expansiveness about the good of being overweight and that all things really do work together for good if we allow them, right? And, you know, I'm a, I'm a Christian. I believe that God does work everything together for good for all of us. Um, and at the same time, you know, sometimes we transform that and warp that into this twisted belief that like, oh, I needed to learn this lesson. And somehow like I deserve this like little punishment or this little test or whatever, because God knew that I needed to learn this really hard lesson. Please, please, please block that crap out because that's absolutely not true. Um, you know, sometimes things just happen. You know, I didn't need to have the childhood that I had. No, that that's warped. That's, that's messed up. That's, that's absolutely not true. What is true is that God always wanted good for me. And now I also want good for myself because I believe that I am worthy of the good that God has for me. And therefore I'm willing to co-create that together with God by taking on different thoughts, trying on new thoughts and trying on new beliefs that are helpful instead of harmful. Oh, my loves, thank you so much for tuning in with me to this episode. And I just want to send you love, letting you know that I see you. I feel empathy for you. I'm cheering for you. I want to support you in your journey. A couple of different ways that we could work together is I do one-on-one coaching and I would love to support you on your journey. Send me a direct message here on Instagram. You can reach out to me through my website, theketofit.com. You can email me, theketofit at gmail.com. I would love to work one-on-one with you, um, helping you find concrete strategies that are going to work for you, but also really doing a lot of this inner work. It's not just about changing behavior, but about changing beliefs so that you can succeed long-term, stick to those strategies long-term without continually um, self-sabotaging. So another way to work with me is actually I have an online course that is a self-coaching tool. It's called the Self-Care Keto um, Mindset Masterclass. And you can specifically find that on my website, theketofit.com slash mindset. Um, it is a, a, it's an option to do some self-coaching and go through 10 of the most powerful mindset shifting exercises that I've used with my one-on-one clients over the last four years. And then um, the last way to work with me is to take one of my once a month classes um, that I'm now offering once a month mindset classes. So again, if you weren't here at the beginning, um, I'm doing my um, live class tomorrow, Thursday, February 24th, 1 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be over Zoom. Uh, Today's the last day to register for that if you want to get in on the live portion, but through the end of the month, you can still go ahead and grab the recording. So you can sign up at bit.ly slash self-care keto class. All right, loves, I'll be back with you soon, and I hope that you have an amazing week.